Hey everybody, today we're going to look at another redistricting map that has recently undergone some changes, and this one is going to be about Alabama. Now just like with North Carolina, there is a long backstory. I've got Ballotpedia pulled up. You can read all about it here. But in short, there are seven congressional districts in Alabama, and this went all the way to the Supreme Court. But the court did rule there has to be that a second majority black district must be created. And that led to a special master being appointed and they put in place a new map. So that's basically what happened. When it comes to a fair map, I'm somebody that puts all the emphasis on the partisan lean of the state. So if you go by that, this is understandably an unfair map. Now, Alabama is a racially polarized state, but I think in every state on either side that has done a lot of gerrymandering, first and foremost, it is all about the partisan makeup. I think very few people are actually targeting anybody because of their race. And with the Supreme Court that is supposed to have gotten more conservative, it is a surprise that they handed down this ruling. There's a lot of bad maps out there. Someday, hopefully, the court will not allow partisan gerrymandering. That will include everybody in all the states. In my opinion, that seems like the best possible outcome. Now, let's switch over to Dave's redistricting and take a look at the old map. So here are the seven congressional districts. So if we add in some partisan shading and take a look at the precincts, we can see where the Democrats and where the Republicans are. The Democrats currently control the 7th District. A lot of that vote is up here. This is Birmingham and Jefferson County. That's the most populous county. So there's some dark blue vote in this part of the district, with the suburban vote of Birmingham going into the other district. So after capturing that blue vote, then the district heads southwest. It captures a lot of this blue vote, and then it reaches a little bit east. And this, this is Montgomery. A lot more blue vote here. So there are two major cities here, both with dense blue populated vote. And this district essentially packs them all into just the one. It does give the Republicans this second district. Now, the other districts are pretty deep red, but that results in a six to one congressional map. And none of these districts last time are competitive at all. So it's not the prettiest looking map, but that's what it was in the midterms. Now, there's other areas you could look at on here, but I'm just trying to hit up the highlights. And unfortunately, as of the time I'm making this video, Dave's redistricting does not have the new map on here. So I can't show you that comparison, but ballot it does have this side-by-side -side comparison, the old map on the left, the new map on the right. You can see the 7th and the 2nd district. That's where most of the change is at. Now that Montgomery is in that 2nd district, the 7th is going to be a little bit less competitive, but the 2nd dramatically shifts. It's taken in all that blue vote, some of the red vote it used to have. That's going to go back into the surrounding districts. So that 2nd district, that's the main one to focus on. If we go back and look at the last midterms, we can see in the 7th district, Democrats were pretty much packed in. They won it easily by almost 30 points. Now, the second district, that has Barry Moore. He also won super comfortably. He got almost 70% of the vote. The Democrat only pulled in 29 there. And according to the Cook PVI, it was an R plus 17. So in this new map, what ended up happening? Well, incumbent Barry Moore no longer lives in that second district. He's now in the first district with Jerry Carl. So as of now, those two are both going to run together and face off in a primary. We'll come back to that in just a minute. But overall, how fair is this new map? Well, if we look at the last election and focus on the statewide popular vote for the U.S. House, Republicans did get 70% of that vote, Democrats under 24. However, that is misleading because two of those races, Democrats did not field a candidate. So their vote is going to be diminished. Republicans ran against libertarians there. So that does skew this statewide result. If you go back to previous elections, it's kind of the same thing for recent cycles. Sometimes Democrats field candidates, sometimes they don't. Sometimes in that deep blue district, the Republicans don't feel the candidate. So just focusing on the House vote does make it a little bit difficult. If you want to see the highest turnout and look at the presidential election, then Republicans are getting almost but not quite two thirds of that vote. So before those six out of seven congressional districts, that amounted to more than 85% of the seats being controlled by Republicans. And also none of those were competitive. Now, if Democrats hold two of those seats, Republicans will be at about 71% of the seats. So if you're trying to look at it fairly, this is a much fairer map. So Democrats are likely to pick up one more seat. Of course, there's going to be a primary for that second district. Republicans are going to have to put up a candidate. It's not a guarantee they can't win it. It's just unlikely. And finally, if we go back to the first district, Barry Moore and Jerry Carroll, they're going to have a showdown in a deep red district. Whoever wins that pretty much can't possibly lose in the general election. 
So that's going to be a potentially high profile race to take a look at. So Democrats celebrating this in Alabama. There are other cases happening around the country. And I've said it before, but when the Supreme Court did not strike down partisan gerrymandering a few years ago, that was disappointing. That ruling could have affected all the states. It theoretically would have rectified this Alabama map, the North Carolina map. It should have also cut into some of these terrible gerrymanders on the other side, like Illinois, New Jersey. It should cover what's going on in New York as well. Plus, keeping it all about the partisan lane of the state, that's just significantly more appealing to me. But I'm going to leave it there for now. That's a quick look at what's happening in Alabama. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about this new map? And how do you think they should draw congressional maps? Do you want race to be at the top? Or do you want the partisan lane to be at the top? And how about Barry Moore against Jerry Carl? Who's going to win that matchup? Let me know down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Join if you'd like to support the channel. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.